To display a sprite on your game, you'll first need the image. The images in this video are from Team Salvato. They are derived from the Doki Doki Literature Club that has been downloaded millions of times. The IP guidelines do not allow the assets to be used in a new game if you're going to sell it or distribute it. It is okay for this type of video or if you just practice for personal use. If you want to distribute your game, you, you need to look for free game assets. Uh, there are many sites with free game assets. You can also just pay a few dollars and buy the assets. If you're just learning, just pick an asset that you think is fun to work with and let's get started. The game asset is simply a normal image file. In the main projects folder, create a subfolder called assets and in there create a subfolder called images. In the images folder, copy and paste the asset that you want to use. The asset needs to have a transparent background. In your pubspec.yaml file, you need to specify the location of the assets. This is the same technique for a normal Flutter project. Type assets slash images and then all the assets in the images subfolder will now be accessible to your game. Run flutter pub get. We're eventually going to need to change line 5 so that it's my game. But for now, let's just set up my game. And at, after it's set up, we'll change line 5 so that game then goes to our new class, my game. The core concept here is to use sprite component. This is from Flame. It comes with a lot of great features to help you use graphics in your game. We're going to assign a variable called Monica, that is the first character of our game, to a blank sprite component. We're going to use the onload method that is part of base game to load our assets. As onload is part of base game, we're going to use the dart override word and set up the asynchronous method onload. Onload comes from flame. The async keyword is from Dart and allows us to wait until the image has finished loading into the system. Although the character Monica is a sprite component, we have not yet assigned the graphic to Monica. So the first step is to assign a sprite. So the sprite is a keyword from flame and then await, so that's a keyword from Dart to load the sprite and it's simply the name of the graphic file that corresponds to the Monica character. In addition to the name of the graphic file for the character, we're also going to specify the size and position. This could be a little tricky because the size is this new uh, flame word, vector2. But if you just put vector2 and then the size in pixels, the width and the height, uh, that you want the character to appear on the screen, you'll be able to get it done. We're going to specify the position of Monica, the, our character, uh, with the x and y coordinates. This is similar to a graph where you have x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis. The upper left hand corner is the 0, 0 coordinate. Add a semicolon after you put the final property, the y property in, to the cascade operators. Those two dots are just, it's called the cascade operator and it's just used to um, add properties to the class. Once you have the Monica sprite component set up, you simply add Monica. Add is a keyword from Flame. And so you add Monica to the Flame game. Now we're going to attach the game variable to my game. Previously we had set it up to base game just for that blank template. But because we want to run my game now, we, we change the variable. There she is. With the character now on the screen, we can take another look at this X coordinate. Originally it's set to zero. She doesn't appear all the way on the left because the graphic that we're using actually has some padding. The more important concept is to change the X coordinate and see how she can move around the screen. For the demonstration of changing the position, I'm using 
hot restart, not the automatic hot reload. Congratulations, you're well on your way to mastering sprite components. Keep in mind that the sprite that we're using, the graphic, has a transparent background. If you attempt to align the actual arm of the girl with the side of the screen, you have to take into account that there is this transparent background border around her. The sprite component is very powerful and it's an important concept for your game development. You've also learned the onload method and the XY coordinate system. In the next video, we're going to use the flame update method to move the character around the screen. Congratulations on your flame game success. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video update.